This is Advanced Algebra Lesson 2-9, Combined and Joint Variation. So when you did 2-8, we found a, we went through a large problem where we looked at the relationship of more than of more than one independent variable in a situation. And we learned how we could set that up if we were given some data. In this lesson, we're going to just look at some different uh, combined or joint variation formulas and learn how to develop our K and solve problems with the actual formula. So let's do a little vocabulary lesson here first. I'd like to look at combined variation. So all that means is that it's a situation in which we have both direct and inverse variations occurring together. So here you have the example S equals K times R times F all over B. And it's read S varies directly as R and F and inversely as B. When we did the equation in lesson 2-8, we found that M varied directly as W and the square of T while M varied inversely as D, if you remember that large problem we did at the end. So we can use combined variation formulas to answer um, several questions. So I have an example for you here. It's about a bicycle. So here we have a bicyclist pedaling at 85 revolutions per minute using a front gear with 39 teeth and a back gear with 13 teeth. At these settings, she's traveling 21 miles per hour. Describe how her speed would change if she decreased her pedaling to 60 revolutions per minute. So we're going to use our formula that was given to us above. And we noticed that they gave us some sets of information first off that we can use to calculate our value for K. So we're going to use our value given, so 39 teeth. Here's going in place of F. We were given 85 revolutions in place of R. And we were given 13 teeth for the back gear, so that can go in place of B. So, and we know that it, she's traveling at 21 miles per hour, so that is our S. So input the substitute our information into our, our formula, and we can solve for K, and we get K to be 7 over 85. So now that we have our value for k, we can write a specific equation. So we're going to input our 7 over 85 into our formula in place of k. So I've written it here. And now we can insert 60 because we're looking at um, what would happen if she decreased her pedaling to 60 revolutions per minute. So what's going to happen to our speed? So we in, in the, the gear is staying the same. And the um, but the revolutions is the thing that's changing. So we're changing R to 60. The front gear is 39. The back gear is 13. Still, go ahead and do your calculation. 7 times 60 times 39. All of that divided by 85 times 13. So we get the speed of approximately 15. So we've gone from 21 to 15, which is a decrease of about um, six miles per hour. So similar process, we just have to insert more values into our formula to begin with in order to calculate our, our value for our constant of variation. Sometimes when we have multiple independent variables, we have a situation where they all happen to vary directly. So we call that a joint variation. So a situation n, which one quantity varies directly as the product of two or more independent variables, but not inversely as any variable. So an example of that might be y equals k times xz, which would be read as y varies jointly as x and z, or y varies directly as a product of x and z. So we're going to work through a guided example here and of a, of a joint variation. So the volume of a solid with a circular base varies jointly as the height of the solid and the square of the radius of the base. So to begin with, we need to write a general equation for that. So we're going to use um, V for the volume of the solid, H for the height of the solid, and R for the radius. And the general uh, equation would then be V equals K times R squared H because notice they said it's the square of the radius and the height of the solid. So now we're going to use our formula from part A and use the values that was given the values that were given in our problem for K 
So in place of r squared, we're going to put 3 times, 3 squared is 9, and our h is 5. We know that that is 45. So if I take 47.1 and divide by 45, that's going to give me an approximate value for k, which is about 1.047. Now, this next piece that I'm going to look at may not have been intuitive to you, but with experience you'll start to see some things like this. And I also know that we're looking at volume and we're also looking at um, something that has a circular base. So let's just explore this a little bit. The value of 3k is approximately equal to 3 times 1.047 is approximately 3.14 and we know that that is really pi which makes sense given that we're looking at volume of something with a circular base so it makes sense that pi would be involved so we're going to express k as one-third pi so that now we're going to take our and substitute our value for k into our equation. So volume is going to be one third pi r squared times h. So if you look at this, this formula may look familiar to you as you studied geometry last year. Based on this formula in part d, the solid could be a cone. And now that we have our formula, we could go ahead and calculate different relationships of our cone and as it relates to volume. This concludes Lesson 2.9.